Gentlemen like our, our next speaker, and we have a few of them in Northwest Indiana, are changing the face of mill towns. The place where we used to go to work and, and then we went home and then people left for a while, but cities like Whiting, Hammond, they're reinventing the mill town with these great assets that have been put in for recreation and leisure and tourism. You take a look at the Whiting Park project, take a look just down the road at what Mayor McDermott has done at Wolf Lake. These are the things that are gonna bring the next generation back to the cities where people wanna live. I, I will argue that people are tired of urban sprawl and living in the middle of, of uh, cornfields. They want what Whiting provides. And the gentleman that's done a great job of that has done it by helping promote great events, Pierogi Fest, Festival of the Lakes, the Air Show, all these things that have put the north end of our county back on the map to bring travelers, to bring our families, to bring people from all over back home, back to the lakefront, to enjoy the things that our people came here to begin with. I could go on at, at great length, but I think I'll keep my comments short and not take any wind out of the sails of the man who is changing this town, this city, and making it something extraordinary for generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Joe Stahur. Thank you, Spiro. Uh, yeah, I'm here today just to make sure that we welcome the newest addition to the Midwest Collegiate League, the Northwest Indiana Oilmen. Uh, I want to stress a couple things. Uh, you know, this is a true partnership between two uh, groups, uh, the Oilmen and the City of White. Um, our intention for this new stadium that we have built is really to bring people downtown and to shop in our business district. Uh, this is an economic development project. Uh, we hope and we are confident the oil men uh, will serve, uh, uh, play a vital role in that partnership uh, with, uh, with the economic development role. Um, we, uh, we anticipate uh, large crowds, uh, people coming to our city, visiting us, and uh, great uh, 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 type of baseball. And uh, I'll definitely be out there watching throughout the year. Uh, you know, this is truly a growth opportunity for our city. Um, you know, we, we built the asset with the intention of, of uh, trying to bring people here. And uh, we hope uh, that uh, all the moves that we're making and all of the, uh, the projects that we're uh, actually uh, building right now uh, lend to that uh, goal. Um, with that said, I, I'm encouraged for the year. I'm excited. And uh, I'm going to turn it over right now to the man who's making it happen. I'm Mr. Don Popovac. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for everybody for coming out today. This is a great day for our organization. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Spirito and his staff uh, for helping coordinate all the press, uh, the press conference and all the materials, uh, and to the city of Whiting for providing us this wonderful setting to be in today. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, both uh, uh, Jamie Tool is here representing uh, the MCLE. Uh, Jamie's in the back, and I'm uh, proud to have him here with us today. Um, a little bit of background on the MCL. It started, uh, as everything does, with a dream. It started in 2010. The dream was to develop a pre-minor league baseball league where the top collegiate athletes from across the Midwest and the country could come to pursue their dreams, to play in front of local fans, but also to accomplish their dream of one day playing in the major leagues. We intended to design this league where clubs will become part of the local fabric of a community uh, and make it an affordable, fun place to be in the summertime. Uh, with all the exciting elements that everyone's come to expect from uh, ballparks across the country, the same kind of experiences, we think that's very important. We not only have the players, but we're now attracting some of the top uh, former professional baseball players in the league as coaches and managers. Right now we have six former professional baseball players uh, in the league, three major league managers, and uh, we just recently named Bob Denier, who coached first base for uh, the Cubs last year, as uh, uh, with the Will County Cracker Jacks. So we're very proud of having people of that stature in our league. Uh, we think it'll help with the development of the players as well as the development of the staffs. About a little bit about it, choosing Whiting, I've got to back up a little bit. I met Joe last year. The snow was flying on the ground. It was a cold, icy day. It's, most of us that grew up in the region know about. Uh, and I had heard about the stadium that he was building. And I came over here and I was quite impressed. 
and we talked at length about opportunities. We, we talked first about hosting the first ever Midwest Collegiate League at Whiting back in July. Uh, and we could not have been more pleased by both the acceptance and the support from both Mayor Joe and his staff and the community. Uh, with the stadium at almost capacity, it kind of de demonstrated to me that there is a true love for the game of baseball and alive in this community. And we wanted to be in a place that had that thirst for the game in a city that had the vision like Whiting does. And that made our decision quite easy where we wanted to go next as we expanded. And when you look at Oil City Stadium, Stadium it's one of the most beautiful community ballparks that I have seen, and I've seen quite a few, not as many as Mayor Joe. Uh, but I must commend him and his staff for their determination in bringing their vision to reality. They certainly hit it out of the ballpark, that's for sure. Um, the kind of club that we want to be here is we want to be good community partners. We want to help and assist the city in attracting businesses or people, downtown businesses, and help the businesses grow. Um, we will be announced, making more announcements as the week comes out about our, both our manager and our players over the next coming weeks. So look for those announcements. Now, having grown up less than three miles from where I'm standing here today, as a youth, I used to ride my bike down Indianapolis Boulevard just to come down to the Dairy Queen to get an ice cream cone and go up and down 119th Street. It was a great experience for me. And I was looking for, it was important for me, bringing a ball club to this area. It was very important that the name of the club exemplified and captured the essence of both the community, the region, and hardworking people that shaped this area for over the last century. So I'm pleased to announce today the baseball club will be known as the Northwest Indiana Oilmen. And our first promotion is to find the H in Northwest. Um, with, you know, any endeavor like this, you can't do it without a great partner. And I have one of the best. Uh, a person that certainly doesn't need an introduction uh, other than to call him a, a friend of mine and business partner, Ryan Kittle. I definitely don't have a, a script like that, I can pretty much tell you that. My entire life, I have never had anything written on a piece of paper. And I get paid a lot of money to give a lot of speeches, but it's a lot of fun. But uh, anyway, Mayor, you look fabulous. Congratulations. You probably just added another 10 years on your life. Being a little bit helpful. Spiro, I see you again. Don, as always, we're friends first. Uh, and this was, we've talked a little bit about, do I have any interest being a participant? in this new league. And I am a region person from Gary, Indiana. Grew up in Etna Miller, went to school. I have Buco friends in this territory. And my loyalty to Northwest Indiana has always been the same. I'm probably the only celebrity athlete or person who's ever, never not said I'm from Gary, Indiana, Northwest region of Indiana, or uh, Indiana. Perfectly great statement. I always think this is a great opportunity, a lot of value, a lot of great hearts, a lot of good people who like good things. And I think the baseball concept here is much like, uh, you know, what's, what's this, uh, The Voice or American Idol. You need to come out and be playing baseball to be seen. It's a wooden bat league. I've got friends up in Wisconsin who own teams, uh, personal friends of mine. They've been trying to get me involved for years with them. I've always turned them around, turned them down because I said, it's important that we do something in the Midwest, Northwest Indiana, and Don kind of brought it into the little piece of paper, and I think that's a, it's a happening thing. The oil men, very fitting. I know the people with BP, they're excited to have this association. Pierogi Fest is the only time I ever come here to eat those things. About 40 pounds of them, matter of fact, in one sitting. <laughs> but it's a nice thing, but uh, you, know, you can sit there and elaborate. I work personally for the Chicago White Sox, marketing PR, I will never, not want to do that job. And this is no, no conflict of interest. Jerry Reinsdorf was my first one. I told Don, I called him personally. I said, Jerry, do you have any 
uh, if ands and doubts of me getting involved with this, and he said absolutely not. He said promoting baseball at this passion and this level is a good thing, and a star might just come out of it one of these days. And I think uh, having a great community, a great town, you, you just might see one. There might be a sleeper. I've managed minor league baseball. I've been their father, their mother, their girlfriend, their boyfriends, the bus driver, the trainer. I've done every capacity there is in baseball. And it's a lot of work. Uh, it wasn't a lot of fun, but I do like being able to have a little bit of an input how to get somebody to play a little bit better. Because I was lucky enough to fulfill a dream and become a professional baseball player. 30 miles away, my family used to come to the park. I've known Al pretty much my whole entire life since high school. Right up. You know, he's interviewed me when I was in high school. How horrible I was then. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's a friendship more than it is a relationship with the media. It, it's, it's a little bit of everything. I think Whiting's lucky to have a team like this. I think this league is going to do well. It's going to need support. The economy's in difficulty uh, array right now. But I think a little bit of outdoor baseball, getting back to the balls and the bats, the hard work and the effort is really going to bring a lot of excitement to this town. Any questions you want to ask me or anybody? No? Come on. The pain. See, if the people from Hammond were here, they'd be asking questions. No humor here either, is it? Are you going to resume as helping out with the Sox organization again this year? Absolutely. That is uh, number one priority. Um, I, I do a lot of things for him. If Jerry Reinsdorf asked me to pick up peanut shells at the end of the ball game, I definitely would. Uh, it's, it's a 40-year relationship, it seems like, that I've had with him uh, since I signed out of a tryout camp. I was one of those local guys that tried out of a tryout camp out of LaPorte, Indiana, to sign with the Dodgers. Unfortunately, I broke my neck, was out of baseball again, played for another summer league team one game, uh, got sought after the White Sox signed me, offered me a contract after going to a tryout. So these little local dreams can come true for some of these guys. And I think the support of the community is going to be uh, a little bit stronger than you think. But everybody likes a winner. And it's nice having your team in your backyard. I, I, walking down the street today, I, I walked into a couple little businesses that I've already chit-chatted with a few people. And uh, they aren't aware of this. I didn't break the, the word what was happening. but. I kind of picked a little question. What do you think about this? Oh, we'd love to see a team coming out here. So they're getting the first taste of it today. I have a question. What kind of jobs are going to be generated by the creation of uh, the oil here in North Carolina? Uh, that would probably be more on Don's part of uh, his question. But you know, these players are not paid. They're, they're, going to, they're collegiate uh, athletes who work part-time jobs of any sort. You know, uh, to try to make ends meet. They play at night. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a 20-hour day for some of these players. But uh, you know, you got to do. You got to pay your bills. So whatever they're capable of doing, and and I think Don's, uh, you know, hardest part is is finding the right kids uh, that have the right makeup to go out there and uh, make the community better. Also, and they're going to. I believe they're going to have a key involvement in the city and doing things, running camps. Uh, I, I, Don and I've talked. I'd like to run the camps here. Um, get other people involved, give them a taste of what it takes to get to the top and run it fair and make it fun for the kids. Just two things, Ron. What will your exact title be with the organization? And secondly, will the emphasis be on local guys to play? Uh, uh, my grand Poobah, isn't it? <laughs> Whatever you want. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know if there's a job title or not. Uh, just friend of Don, I don't know. We, we don't need to discuss stuff like that. Friendships are friendships. Uh, I, I'm gonna give everything I possibly can uh, to make this happen. Uh, for, for the players local, I would say probably not. I, I mean, if- it Depends on what level that they can play at. Yeah. We're gonna, obviously the intention is to find the best available players that we can. Not only from the Midwest, but across the country. If it's someone that like Ron that grew up in Gary, and that's the best available ball player. We're going to find that person. You know, I keep looking back at the field of dreams with Kevin Costner, and uh, they're driving that doctor home in a car, looking for a field to play many miles, and he gets there. We've all pretty much seen that movie. Uh, if the right person wants to play ball and give it 100% and dedicate himself, he's going to come looking for us for definitely good programs. 
And a key thing for when I managed uh, up in Schaumburg for a while, people were calling me, wanting to play for me. And these guys, I couldn't have been any harder on these players. And we butted heads a little bit, and all of a sudden, now they want me to be their best man, be at their christening of their children. And these are the ones that I was the hardest on, that I really pounded into them. And I just, and my, my line was, I wish I would have had you at an earlier age to teach you how to do these things the right way. And I, I still communicate with probably 50 players that I've managed or coached. And I, I think that's pretty good because, and I still keep in touch with my minor league managers for the old days. Tony LaRusso, you guys ever heard of him? You know. <laughs> but uh, he was one of my minor league coaches. And uh, you know, you learn, it's, it's out of respect. The players are gonna come. You know, if you build it, they will come. It's already built, now we need them. But to follow up on your question too, there's tremendous talent uh, in Northwest Indiana. I mean, it's a, the, one of the most populous areas of the state. Uh, there's a lot of hardworking kids here, so we'll be you know, closely evaluating their talent level. And a lot of the players move on to some sizable schools uh, from, from the region. So we'll certainly be looking at uh, to, to bring that local flavor back too. Because you have to understand the more local emphasis on the roster, probably a better chance to draw people because they know sure. these kids already. Absolutely. Sure. Along with somebody that's going to go into the first five rounds of the draft. Go back to that jobs question that was asked earlier. I think a major part of it, and I know the mayor would like to speak to, but the, why communities do things like this is to generate the foot traffic for downtown. So you have a thousand people coming out on a night. You've got a brand new microbrewery. You've got restaurants. You've got existing uh, beverage establishments. What do you have? How many restaurants? We're working at least four right now. So, yeah. so the jobs that get created are new jobs in those facilities. The few jobs that, that you're going to create, and that's where we bring a higher level of efficiency to local business. So I I would think that this community, with the beauty built into 119th Street and the businesses there, is going to have a lot of interest in, in what's going on. And there's direct jobs, you know, with the maintenance of the field, the upkeep of the field, the concessions operations, of course, the hiring umpires and coaches and, and managers and stuff like that. So there, there is a lot of uh, uh, activity and, and a lot of employment associated with the entire concept. Anything else? I guess, go ahead. What kind of promotions will you be doing for the team? Uh, disco demolition night. Okay. <laughs> Find the age. He was there. Find the age. He was there. Find the age. Yeah, Find the age. He was there. I was there. We both know who was in charge of that promotion. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that's still in the works, but they're going to do everything we can uh, on my part. Like I said, I have a commitment to the Chicago White Sox, but I also travel all over the world and I have other things that I do. I'm a woodworker. I'm going to try to incorporate my charity that I do uh, I, 23 years, Indiana Sports Charities. Uh, we do Northwest Indiana, Northwest Indiana and Chicago hospitals. Uh, I'm a firm believer. Anything I do, something's going to be part of that. Uh, I'm a big advocate of uh, Made in USA. I, I love the region. Uh, I, I just wish I was one of those guys that won the lottery or just made buco bucks and stayed healthy. Uh, I would probably do more for the region, but unfortunately, I'm just a pauper. And uh, I just want to come out here. But my time is just as valuable as somebody given hard work. And uh, one of my models that I taught my children, I will never ever let anybody outwork me, no matter what it is. So if I have to do that to pass that on to somebody else, I will definitely pass that on. And I think that's the fun part of it. Now to follow up on your question about promotions, we're developing that schedule right now. But one of the largest promotions we're gonna have this summer is on July 1st. Uh, the United States Military Touring Baseball Team is gonna to come to town and we're going to help raise money for disabled veterans. It's going to kick off basically our salute to Patriots Week, uh, culminating on the 4th of July. Uh, Whiting has one of the oldest continuous 4th of July parades in the country, started in 1919, so it's coming up on 100 years. We think that that's going to be a great week. to will also dovetail into the air show, uh, which starts that weekend. So we're going to be a big focus on um, raising awareness for disabled veterans and former veterans. So we're going to be working with the VFWs and the American Legions across the region and the state of Indiana to try to get as much support up here as we possibly can. Will they be playing the oil in or? Yes. Okay. So it'll, it'll be, be an, an exhibition, exhibition game. Okay. Yes. Perfect. And it's made up of, of players from across all different military branches. 
and all they do in the summer is they mount, get on a bus and they go from one end of the country to the other side of the country playing local teams and raising awareness for the United States military <coughs> and disabled veterans. You know, I, I'll interrupt here for a second. This year, the Chicago White Sox ran a fantasy camp. I saw Don and I met years ago, and they brought a team out there. People sponsored them to come to camp. And these guys, one guy was shot through both lungs and he still lived. Uh, he just got called back to duty. Uh, other people who lost, you know, lost their ankles, broke every bone, they got steel things, they can't bend. They fielded the whole team out there. And unfortunately, I was the first, all the coaches pitch. So I got to face them first and uh, they never gave up. I beat them twice. And I told them, I said, I take no prisoners myself. But the second game, you know, and they haven't been baseball players. They've been military guys. And they beat, we beat them 22 to 20. And I tell you what, these guys wear their jerseys every single day. They send me Facebook pictures. They're always taking pictures and, you know, of different things with their jerseys on. It was a highlight of their lives. And, you know, they risked their lives for us and our country. And it was nice enough to have people sponsor them. Uh, I've created great friendships with them. It's called Team Salute, and we've done some fashionable things with. I just recently, and I showed Don here about, what, a month ago? Uh, I, I, I'm making red, white, and blue baseball gloves. Uh, with the element of USA, <coughs> the percentage of the pro proceeds are going to definitely go back into the the needy soldiers that need our help. So it's it's all in fun, and uh, it, it's it's a great game. It's baseball, apple pie, Chevrolet, whatever it is, Ford, <coughs> Zuzu. You know, we just need to make it happen. I think Whiting's a, a great choice, Mayor. Congratulations, Spiro. It's all back to you. Thank you. Unless there's any other questions for any of us here, we're available to you individually. Thanks for coming out, and we'll see you at the ballpark, right, man? You throwing out the first pitch? Uh, I'll try. If they need me, I'll be there. You did a marvelous yeah, job. As a side note, how many ballparks have you visited in America? All. All of them. Every, all every major, major league ballpark you've been to. That's about 11 or 12 that are alive. Needless to say, you wouldn't work a lot. Wow. Good point. I didn't stay long at Cellular Field. So. Oh, I let you in. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, 17 people in stands. That was an off day. I have one more question for you, or actually two questions for Mr. Kittle. Mr. Kittle, at what point in your life, or at what age, did you realize that you wanted to be a baseball player, and why do you think you became you, you actually became a professional baseball player. Uh, I would probably say the first time I watched Game of the Week with my dad, the Baltimore Orioles were playing. Brooks Robinson caught and dove and made two great plays. And I said, I wanted to do that. And uh, I probably went outside until the street light went on and started hitting balls with a wiffle ball bat and hitting rocks and sticks. And I just never stopped. And uh, really I was gonna, I was looking more for basketball and football until somebody said I couldn't play because I wore glasses and this was a scout and that was probably my sophomore year and it really turned my head to, to create a challenge for myself to do that. So I've always had this passion. I don't love the game, I like the game. I, I, you know, there's not many things that I, I put into the love category, uh, but I like it with a passion and I'll, I'll give it everything I possibly have. Why, why, why not love it? Why? Uh, yeah, I'm not upset. I don't like watching the game. I work, you know, that's my job to go to the park. I, I like playing. I like playing catch. Uh, you know, just rec last summer I was driving down the street. I got lost and a dad was playing catch with his son outside. I think I might have told you this. And over in Palos Park. And the dad couldn't throw. The boy couldn't throw either. So I, I pulled my car over. I said, can I give you a pointer? I played catch with him for 22 minutes. Uh, I gave him my car to dad. He emailed me. Uh, later that afternoon and he said his son struck out 15 kids uh, just learning how to take the ball up on top instead of down here on the side and uh, got his first couple of hits in the game so uh, and I kind of blasted it on Facebook and everybody said come to my son's games come to my son's you know I can't do that but th that's the that's my passion for the game uh, it, I'm not going to offer it unless I see it or you ask because you can't step on anybody's toes nowadays that's why I'm not coaching for the major league levels because I'm afraid I might hurt somebody's feelings. And we can't have that happen. They make too much money to cry.
I hope there's more excitement in their courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the logo? Very nice. You like it? Yeah. I would say uh, of the marketing skills that I have and all the baseball things that I've seen, logos, uh, hats are, are key components to pretty much anything around the, in the country. And if it's done right and done tastefully, uh, that kind of just uh, represents what Whiting's all about right there. I think it was a good call, Don. You did a good job. I'm a little concerned that it's black and gold, though. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a little too much pretty overtones. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, the, oil, it, the black represents oil. Okay. The gold represents money. black money. money. <laughs> <laughs> and the blue represents the, the color of a lot of what oil men wear.